Hello students, I am Professor Dr. Adarsh Kumar. Today I bring you the next learning episode in BSc Forensic Science of an important unit of paper forensic medicine that is drowning. Now we will try to understand this chapter in detail with the help of following modules. Module 1 deal with the drowning, module 2 will be the types of drowning, module 3 will cover the autopsy findings in case of drowning, module 4 will be the various chemical tests for drowning, module 5 will cover the various medical legal aspects in case of drowning and module 6 will be the conclusion. Drowning is a form of violent asphyxial death caused by aspiration of fluid into air passages caused by complete or partial submersion in water or other fluids. Thus, death occurs either due to entry of the fluid in the respiratory passages or due to the effects of severe water and electrolyte imbalance. Now, let us see the mechanism of drowning, how it happens. Before going to the autopsy findings and the mechanism of drowning, it is very important to understand what happens to a person who falls into the water. As you can envisage, when the person falls into the water, initially he sinks into a depth corresponding to the momentum of his fall. However, the inherent buoyancy along with the additional struggling movement and the air trapped in his clothes tends to make the person float rather than sink and then the person rises towards the surface. In his desperate attempt to inhale air, the person in turn gulps down large volume of water which are partly inhaled and partly swallowed. The water then inadvertently enters into the respiratory passages and this acts as a foreign irritant and excites strong reflexes. And at the same time, large volume of air is being driven out of the lungs. As a result of which, asphyxia occurs which leads to insensibility and the victim finally succumbs. The barotrauma to the middle ear causes hemorrhage thus leading to vestibular disturbances and this makes the victim lose his sense of direction underwater. During his struggle of life underwater, the victim may grasp anything which comes to his reach like weeds, straws, etc. and such articles are found grasped in the hand of the victim as a manifestation of cadaveric spasm which shows a clear cut case of antimortem drowning. A very famous quote in English is the drowning man clutches the straw or Hindi what we called as dupte ko tinke ka sahara. First is the wet drowning. This is the commonest type of drowning and water is completely inhaled into the lungs. Wet drowning again is of two types, fresh water drowning and sea water drowning. Fresh water drowning causes hemodilution up to 70 percent within a couple of minutes. This results in the lysis of the RBCs which in turn leads to hyperkalemia and hyponatremia. That means increase in the potassium levels and decrease in the sodium levels. In turn there is a circulatory overload. This fresh water also denatures the surfactant which causes decrease in the lung compliance. There is a fall in the systolic blood pressure leading to myocardial anoxia, ventricular fibrillation and ultimately death. In fresh water drowning, death occurs within 2-3 to three minutes. The other possibility is the sea water drowning. Sea water is a hypertonic medium and causes hemoconcentration of the blood. And due to hemoconcentration, as much as 40 percent of the water from circulation is withdrawn into the lungs and massive pulmonary edema is produced. There is increased cerium sodium concentration, pulmonary edema and myocardial anoxia causes death. In sea water drowning, the death occurs within 4 to 5 minutes. Now, the, after the wet drowning, the second category of the drowning is the dry drowning. Here the water enters the larynx, but due to immediate and severe laryngeal spasm, the water is prevented from entering the lungs, death is mainly due to the laryngeal spasm. 
third type of drowning is the secondary drowning also called as post immersion syndrome. Death occurs due to secondary effects of drowning usually seen after a gap of few hours or days in a resuscitated patient. Death may be either due to anoxia or irreversible brain damage associated with electrolyte imbalance or metabolic acidosis. Death may be due to any associated head trauma or may be due to bronchopneumonia. Fourth category or the type of drowning is the hydrocution also called as immersion syndrome. Here death occurs due to cardiac arrest as a result of vagal inhibition due to cold water stimulation of the nerve endings on the body surface, ear and nasal passages and epigastrium. If a person suddenly jumps in cold water or takes bath in cold water, the sudden contact with the cold water may stimulate the vagus nerve causing hydrocution. Now, let us see the various causes of death in drowning. Following are the causes of death in drowning like asphyxia, myocardial anoxia, ventricular fibrillation, vagal inhibition, laryngeal spasm, exhaustion, secondary injuries for example, head injuries. So, any of these or all of these could be found in case of drowning. Externally what we see the clothing, skin and hair are wet. The skin is pale, cold and clammy due to contraction of the superficial blood vessels with low body temperature resembling temperature of the water. The post mortem lividity is seen over the face, head and neck and front of chest as the body floats in an upside down position and is usually bright pink in color due to imbibition of oxygen through the water. But if the body floats in the water in upside down position for a quite longer duration, then the color of the body usually becomes dusky and cyanotic. However, in turbulent water where the body is in continuous movement, then postmortem levity may not develop at all. Cutis encerina or the goose fleshings or the goose skin usually occurs due to contraction of the erector pili muscles. It appears as a puckered appearance of the skin with hair standing. In drowning, the rigor mortis sets in early and pauses off early due to exhaustion of the muscles. Conjunctiva may be congested with subconjunctival hemorrhages may be present. The hands show cadaveric spasm with grasping of the weed, straw, hay, etc. Washerwoman's hands and feet are seen after 48 to 72 hours where the skin of the palms and sole become bleached, wrinkled and sodden if the body remains submerged for that period. The epidermis separates from the dermis in glove and stocking fashion from the hands and feet. Froth in drowning is characteristically called as foam and is described as fine, white, copious, tenacious, lathery and persistent frothy form in the shape of a balloon seen oozing out from the mouth and nostrils and comes again after being wiped off. This is formed by the water inhaled into the lungs which causes irritation of the mucosa leading to secretion of the mucus. Water along with disquamated epithelium and mucus are all churned up to form the froth by violent respiratory efforts. It may be blood tinged thus giving a pinkish hue. This froth is pathognomonic of drowning. When pressure is ex exerted upon the chest then copious froth exudes further. Other differential diagnosis of froth could be organophosphorus poisoning, opium poisoning, putrefaction, electrocution, epilepsy, putrefactive gases accumulate inside the body cavities leading to the rise of the body to the surface. Then the internal findings or the internal appearance. The airway contain stiff form or frothy fluid or gritty gravel or mud from the dirty water. This can be confirmed by performing a simple slide test. The contents of the airways are smeared over a glass slide and then another glass slide is drawn over it. Presence of gritty sensation confirms drowning. 
The lungs show large subpleural hemorrhages produced due to rupture of the intra alveolar partitions beneath the pleura which are called Pultov's hemorrhage. They are more prominent over the lower lobes and interlobar surfaces. The lungs are ballooned up, edematous, heavy and boggy. They are dovey and spongy and on an autopsy examination the margins of both lungs completely opposed to each other thereby covering the pericardium. On cut section crepitus like feeling is present due to entrapment of water what we called as emphysema aquosum. The condition develops only when the conscious victim of drowning struggles for survival. Rib markings can also be seen over the boggy and voluminous lungs. In dry drowning such changes are not seen and usually non-specific signs of asphyxia are present. In salt water drowning lungs are much more edematous than fresh water drowning and appear purple. The blood is more likely to remain in a fluid state due to prevention of coagulation resulting from the release of plasminogen activator from damaged epithelium of pulmonary capillaries. Water may also be detected from middle ear resulting from violent respiratory excursions. There may be associated hemorrhage from the middle ear as well. There are two tests diatom test and the Gettler's test. Let us see the diatom test first. Most samples of the water contain microscopic unicellular algae or plankton called as diatoms. These diatoms possess silicaceous cell membranes and vary from a size of 10 to 80 microns. As a result of these hard shells microorganisms are heat and acid resistant. In wet drowning these microorganisms get aspirated along with the inhaled water and then pass into the circulation through ruptured pulmonary capillaries or alveolar walls and finally get distributed to various organs of the body and ultimately to the bone marrow. They are demonstrated histologically and their presence in the victim's body and the same set of diatoms present in the water concludes the case to be of antimortem drowning. A simple test is performed from bone marrow collected from sternum to demonstrate the diatoms. First the marrow is subjected to acidization, centrifuged and then the sediment is examined under microscope. A sample of bone marrow a minimum 5 gram can be taken from the sternum or the long bones and digested with nitric acid for 1 to 2 hours. Then the fluid is centrifuged and the deposit is examined microscopically. Through acid digestion all the organic matter will dissolve except the diatoms because of the silicaceous covering. A sample of the drowning medium is also subjected to microscopic examination. A few drops of tincture iodine or Lugol's iodine is added to the water sample and then allowed to stand for 24 hours. This is then centrifuged at the rate of 3000 rotations per minute. The supernatant fluid is discarded and the deposit examined microscopically. If both the medium and the marrow contain the same type of diatoms then it is conclusive evidence of death due to drowning in that medium. Tissue like lungs, kidney, brain etc. can also be subjected to this test. The most advantage of this test is diatoms resist putrefaction. However, a negative diatom test does not rule out the possibility of drowning. Second test is the Gettler's test also known as chloride test. This is done by drawing 10 ml of blood from each ventricles of the heart and subjecting it to estimation of chlorides. The normal values of chloride in each chamber is 600 milligram percent. In sea water drowning there is said to be 30 to 40 percent increase of the chloride level in blood in left ventricle while in fresh water drowning the chlorides get reduced by 50 percent. But this change is not seen in dry drowning. So the practical implication is limited.
the first and foremost medical legal implication is to establish whether it is an antemortem drowning or postmortem drowning. The points which favors antemortem drowning are summarized as presence of froth which is copious, tenacious, lathery exuding from mouth and nostrils, cadaveric spasma of hands where materials like weeds, sand particles etc. are seen clutched, pulse of hemorrhage on the surface of the lungs, voluminous lungs with crepitus like feel on cut section and rib markings, presence of sand or mud particles in the larynx, water in the middle ear and in the stomach and the positive diatom test. Accidental drowning is the commonest manner of death followed by suicidal drowning. The former is more common in children, elderly individuals, persons who cannot swim properly. Suicidal drowning is more common among the females. Homicidal drowning are rare, but if occurs will be associated with other findings like associated injuries or poisoning etc. Death occurring in shallow water should be considered as homicidal until unless proved otherwise. In homicidal drowning, the hands and feet of the victim may be tied with weights etc. Any associated injuries found should be evaluated properly and if necessary, crime scene visit should be done. A good swimmer can also tie his hand and feet by himself to commit suicide by drowning. Drowning is a form of violent asphyxial death caused by aspiration of fluid into air passages caused by complete or partial submersion in water or other fluids. Various types of drowning are wet, dry, secondary drowning and hydrocution. Wet drowning could be in sea water or fresh water. The causes of death in drowning are asphyxia, myocardial anoxia, ventricular fibrillation, vagal inhibition laryngeal spasm, exhaustion and secondary injuries for example, head injuries. If the body floats in the water in upside down position for a quite longer duration, then the color usually becomes dusky and cyanotic. Foam is characteristic feature of antemortem drowning. The lungs show large subpleural hemorrhages produced due to rupture of the intraalveolar partitions beneath the pleura which are called Pultoff's hemorrhages. The hand show cadaveric spasm with grasping of weed, straw, hay etc. Washerwoman's hands and feet are seen after 48 to 72 hours of submersion where the skin of the palms and sole becomes bleached, wrinkled and soddened. The diatom test helps in making diagnosis of death due to drowning. A simple test is performed from bone marrow collected from sternum to demonstrate the presence of diatoms. Bone marrow is subjected to acid digestion, centrifuged and then the sediment is examined under microscope and compared with the drowning medium. Dear students, this is the end of our conclusion module in which we have recapitulated our chapter about drowning. The objectives which we understood are definition and mechanism of drowning, types of drowning, causes of death in drowning, postmortem findings in cases of drowning, various chemical tests for the drowning and the medical legal aspects of drowning. I hope you all have enjoyed this lecture and gained valuable knowledge. I hope you all have understood the underlying concept of this chapter. Do keep in mind what we discussed today. I will be back with one more lecture in this series. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for MCQ, quizzes, LORs, etc. Make sure you revise the modules frequently so that you master the topic well and take up the exercises. Thank you for your time today. I will see you in the next lecture. Keep learning and goodbye.